What you can see here is a CPU from the 8-bit era, a 6809. Well, not exactly. It's a Hitachi made compatible clone of the original Motorola MC6809. This one is called a HD6309. I've followed several homebrew builds online, and this CPU isn't the most common choice. But I find it an extremely cool 8 bit CPU. It came later than most popular 8 bit families arguably the last new 8-bit architecture. It has many unique features that move it from the microprocessors are toy computers mindset of the 70s to the microprocessors can be used for real serious computing philosophy of the 80s and up to today. The one caveat, it's no longer in regular production, except for some on-demand and expensive manufacturers. But there's still quite a bit of new old stock going around, and I got this one on eBay. I have yet to test it, so here's hoping it's not counterfeit. Otherwise, this video series will end up quite abruptly. I will record it whenever I test it, so we'll find out together. It's the first microprocessor ever to have hardware multiplication. It has three interrupts and more uniform registers. People in the 6502 world sometimes show that by using page 0, you have 256 registers. In the 6809, you can use any page in memory as page 0. The pinout has some bus control to support DMA and share the bus more easily with other devices. The instruction circuit architecture is primarily orthogonal, has many flexible addressing modes to support compile code more efficiently, and supports both position independent and re-entrant code. The last set of features is what drives me to use it. It's still an 8-bit CPU, so it's easy to build a system around it quickly, but it will let me explore some areas about compilers and operating systems and how they interact with hardware. So what's the plan? First, I need to create a clock for this. My debugging clock will not work because this is a dynamic design that can't be halted by stopping the clock. It loses internal data if you do that. So it has a minimum clock speed. The clock setup is a bit more elaborate than just attaching an oscillator to it. Once I have that, I will rerun it and check if it's live. Then I can start adding some ROM and try some ROM-only code. And then I can set up a fully powered computer by adding some RAM. Once it can compute things, I'll add a serial port to get some basic input and output. And hopefully with that, I can get it to run some exciting piece of software I can find online. And that's just a starting point. Once the full computer is working, the actual fun begins. And I'll use it to explore interesting problems and ideas where hardware and software meet. I'm looking forward to it.